This is a companion video for Architectural Simulations Exercise 2 on daylighting, starting with small spaces. Last week, we designed a house that could be reconfigured as an apartment for um, placement inside a multi-unit building. We um, You have a basic floor plan, interior partitions, we chose um, windows, etc. So now we need to prepare this or we want to run a daylighting simulation on this model. The first thing we should uh, remember or realize is that we don't want to use our architectural model, uh, partly because the daylighting and thermal and other simulations we're going to do require uh, specific geometries that are based on architecture, but not the same, but also the idea here is that we're creating an iterative, iterative flow between architecture and simulation, between form and performance. So we don't want to, we want to have uh, these as separate models so that if one is informing the other, um, we can make changes and iterate uh, in a loop. So as an example, oh, and the, uh, the way I really suggest you doing this, there's other ways you could, you could conceive of it, but I would, um, copy my architectural model or whatever layers of it are, re are relevant for my simulation. So for example, here what I did was I took um, the house portion of uh, th th these house layers. I right clicked um, and I duplicated layers and objects. If I were to do that right now, um, I would just get a copy of each of those layers and it would say copy next to it and then I could move them wherever I wanted to. So that's what I did to create this daylighting uh, simulation or this daylighting model. And we can see that it's um, very similar. I'm going to turn on the partition walls, but there are some differences. Let me turn off the ground so I get rid of that. Um, one thing is that this we have a ceiling but it's transparent. How did I do that first? Well, I can um, either do that in the layer by making it transparent here. I decided not to do that. I used set object uh, display mode. If you do that, you can um, adjust the display to any uh, view type that you like. So for example, I'll change this back to shaded. Uh, and then now change it back again. So we can have different objects that have different display uh, characteristics, which is really helpful. The reason I'm doing this here is because I want to be able to see the simulation as it's running. Uh, there's a variety of reasons for that. One is that um, Climate Studio quickly estimates the outputs, and so that's often very accurate. So I might be able to stop my simulation very quickly if I see that it's not changing very much because the estimate is so good. Um, I also may see that I don't like what I'm, that I forgot to turn something on or, you know, I, I, I want to stop it. Um, so I want to watch, I want to be able to see that the simulation. Also, if I am going to let it run to the end, and by the end, there's multiple runs that, that occur. Usually it's a hundred passes, I'm sorry, that, that occur in, in a single simulation. Um, and even if I'm letting it go to the end, I can watch it happening uh, and decide what I'm going to do next. Or, you know, um, I could be, I can, you can also do other things in the model, like you can name the simulation or whatever as it's running. All right. So um, we have a, the point is we have a, a clear ceiling, which we didn't have in the architectural model. I've also, I'm going to turn off my partition walls. I've created these floor plates. Um, in this case, I just mimic the rooms, including the porch. Why would I do that instead of just using, you know, I could have just um, selected the ground and use that. Um, there's, there's several reasons why. One is that I, I don't want this I don't want this space under the wall to be part of the simulation because that's going to mess up my percentages. Um, in other words, you know, um, for example, daylight factor is a percentage of um, it, it's, it's outdoor illuminance divided by indoor illuminance. And so if 
I want that to be as accurate as possible, and so I want the, the square footages to be accurate. Also, I can set different work plane heights. If these were one was an office and the other was like a basketball court or something, I would want to have different work plane heights. And finally, I can um, turn off different parts of the model. So, for example, I'm going to model um, my porch um, because I want to see how adding a, an overhang or taking it off affects the light outside. But I also want to be able to turn that off so that if I am only modeling the interior spaces. Um, okay, so I think that, oh, and the final thing I want to say is that um, we want our, this is not a one-way street. We're not just modeling architecture, architectural form and then saying, okay, we'll see what, what's that going to do for daylighting. Um, we want to be able to be simulating and say, uh, for example, here I'm going to try a number of different overhangs. I can change their, their sizes really easily. And if I decide, you know what, that's the one I want to keep, then I can move that back to architecture. So I'm iterating. Also, I'm generating form also from the simulations that the architecture will take on. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and set this up and run our first simulation. Let's start at the beginning, a place we know. Um, Remember that um, we need to have climate data. In the assignment, it says you should uh, download the New York LaGuardia Airport um, climate set data set. Um, remember, there's you know there's a series of tabs here that so so this is the uh, climate data tab, and now I'm in uh, the site analysis sub tabs here. Um, I'm going to switch now to daylight availability, um, which is basically just a measure of how much. Uh, daylight we're getting inside the space and then we control how we're um, simulating that. There's a bunch of options here for daylight availability. We could do a LEED uh, 4.1 simulation, which we are going to do because LEED is a, a baseline benchmark for the, the semester. Uh, if we were in Europe or we just wanted to try to see the, the, the comparison, BREAM is a UK standard. Uh, EN 17037 is an engineering uh, model. Uh, and uh, we're going to do daylight factor. And right now we're going to do we're going to do more than just that, but uh, it's a starting point place. Daylight factor is um, the ratio of out uh, the illumination outdoors to the illumination indoors. Pretty simple. Um, the model has to decide what kind of sky where is outside, and this is a an annual average. So typically we use an overcast sky, and that's just a setting that's in the model. Um, it's already preset in this, but like for example, when we, when we get to um, point in time illuminance, we'll have to choose the type of sky model we want to um, we want to run. Um, okay, so we're saying that we are um, going to run a daylight factor analysis, which is going to give us a outdoor overcast sky to indoor uh, daylighting illuminance um, ratio. So let's look at our inputs here. One thing we have to do is apply materials, right? Because we are, um, the way this works is that light is either going through something like a window or it's hitting a surface and then reflecting off of it. Uh, some of it's absorbed, some of it's reflected. There's, you know, complex physics going on here. And so we have to define the material so that the model knows um, how it's going to interact with the light. Uh, it's very simple to do that in Climate Studio. Um, the way it works is that if we go to our Materials tab, any of the layers that we have on will show up here, and we can apply materials to them. So for example, if I turn off my fenestration here, then those layers disappear. So whatever, in this case, what we have on in the uh, layer structure um, is what will be in the model if it has a material. If it doesn't, then um, even though it's on, In the, the model, if it doesn't have a material applied, it will not be in the simulation. So that's a point I'm going to make over and over again, is that even though we're not engineers, we have to use our common sense and decide whether or not our outputs are making sense. So if we ran this um, simulation and we got, um, for example, if we got just complete light everywhere, we would probably think, well, there's maybe there's something wrong with the ceiling. Maybe I didn't have it on, or maybe I... Um, you know, whatever. So you have to think, you have to be uh, critical as you're, you're running these. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn fenestration back on. 
Oh, actually, I actually already did. Um, so what are what what do I want on for this model? I want my exterior walls. Yes, they here they are. I'm going to um, uh, let's just I've already got because I've run this before. I've already got materials applied, but let's just do one as an example. So if I if I slick on uh, select a a layer, this library comes up. There's two options here: glazing assembly for anything that's got glazing in it or other for everything else um, you can search for things so like for example if i wanted concrete i could type in concrete and then a bunch of concrete stuff is going to show up um, and then we just hit select and uh, it shows up here um, and that will stay our choice uh, through other simulations um, so we have to be conscious of that that we you know that once we've chosen it we can easily change it but it's going to be that's what what our model sees as the material for that layer uh, let me turn on our partition so i can have them in you know and i didn't spend a lot of time thinking about what i should um uh what material i should choose maybe i should be more careful about that but um uh you know it, it's going to make a difference like if this were highly reflective that's going to be different than if it, it's uh dull like this like a like a plaster wall um but the main thing is to get a material applied uh we in the assignment let's just look at the assignment quickly it says here uh nyc laguardia and clear glazing single plane glazing so let's just look at that um if i click select this here i uh, go to glazing i'm going to type in clear and single pane, um, we have dif different um, uh, physical properties that, that um, is part of a lecture I've given or will give. So I won't, I'm not going to go into the details of those right now. Um, I will as soon as I, if I ever select a different piece of glass, then I'll talk about them. Uh, but anyway, so that was what we're assigned to um, select is just this clear. Clear, clear would be a double pane uh, and it's going to have different properties. Okay, and then I just gave the, the doors and the floor both of just a wooden door, just uh, that, that's similar, so they're made of wood. Uh, and the ceiling is a painted white ceiling. Okay, so that's all the materials I think we need. Now we need, um, so that's this. Um, now we need areas. I've already created the areas, um, but let me, actually, let me just do one out here. Let's say I had um, a surface. And I wanted this to be a uh, a floor in a model. If I select it and I come and I'm in in this tab and I and I select the areas tab, um, this dialog opens up. I can give a description if I want to. I can determine how many sensors. Uh, the sensor spacing. This is per square foot, I believe. Uh, the sensor inset. That's how far it is away from the edge of the the floor plate. And then the works uh, plane offset is how high it is off the floor. So is it a table? Is it a, you know, like I said, a gym floor? Is it something else? We could decide that here. Um, and then once you do that, you get this plane above the surface that you um, identified. Sometimes these might flip. So, for example, if this were um, to be turned the wrong way, it would look like this, and that it's basically upside down, right? So, just uh, you know, there's going to be little things like that all semester we have to identify and uh, troubleshoot. So, let me know if you have problems where things are, you know, seem bizarre, and chances are I've seen it happen before. Okay, so I did that on all those rooms, and so I have these work areas that I can, or work planes, uh, and then I've named them so that I know, um, you know, so that I can identify them quickly. And that, in, for a daylight factor, daylight availability study, that's all we need is materials uh, on our surfaces and areas defined. We could add uh, tubular skylights, we'll do that later, but I mean, in a, in a different workflow, we're not going to do it today. Um, all right, so now I'm ready to run this simulation.
And so we can see I'm, I'm at 20 passes, but I'm already, this is enough because nothing's changing. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop it. Um, though I could have waited, it's not um, taking that long. Um, and let's see, what do we have here? Uh, for daylight factor, we have um, a summary of the mean and the median. Uh, daylight factor mean is the average, median is the middle. Uh, and our requirement in the assignment was um, that no inhabited space should have a mean less than 2.5%. And so here we are. Uh, most spaces are above 2.5. Some are well above it. Um, and definitely our mean is well above uh, 2.5. Then that's for the whole thing. So maybe we, if, well, here we are. If we look at each individual space, um, 6.4. Mechanical room doesn't have any windows, so of course that doesn't count. Um, 3.1, 7.6, 5.1, 72.48 for the porch. So yeah, we're um, we're well within that for our daylight factor. Now let's run another simulation quickly where I add in the porch let's see the porch and the the back entrance because um, I want to see what happens down here because uh, right now we're, we're a lot of sun down here right 92 daylight factor 92 percent so that's almost as much as there is outside uh, let's run again so you can see we can very quickly run multiple um, simulations so it should be that um, You'll see that because it shouldn't change inside. Uh, all that's happening is we're changing the outside, but we did get a fairly significant change on the outside. 87, um, 52, back here is 30. So we could we could think about you know if we're trying to design the space to have a certain um, uh, amount of light at different times of year, or I mean this is an average. Um, that would be the purpose of doing of of having this space on for the simulation and ha and, and messing with the overhang. One thing we definitely want to do is name these uh, simulations. So the first one was what? Daylight factor, um, clear glass, no overhang. And then this one is daylight factor, um, overhang over the porch and the entrance. Um, done. Let's go ahead and quickly run another one that um, adds a two-foot overhang. Actually, a two-foot on the south. And uh, and why would I be doing this? Well, one thing I'm, I'm already thinking, well, first of all, I just want to see if, it's, if it has an effect. And, you know, this is pretty, pretty sunny down here, right? I'm thinking this might be glary. Um, that's, you know, it doesn't matter out here. But um, so what happens if I uh, add a little bit of overhang? Will that help at all? Let's try it. And actually, let's go and see if while this is running, um, if I, because I wasn't paying attention, I'm going quickly. Did I add, OK, yeah, we already had, uh, because I'd run this before, we, we have materials on all of those overhangs. So they are part of the model. Um, and I can see already that um, a little bit of effect. Um, you know, uh, 8.3 8 to 7.1 in the living room, we're down to um, an average, you know, the, this was affected slightly. Um, but that's probably, you know, that's good to know. That, uh, and it's quick. Um, but I'm still thinking, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if an overhang is going to do it here. We may have to do something else. But let's go ahead and name that. C, daylight factor, um, OH. South, two feet. West, six feet. I think this is six feet. Yeah. Um, okay. So when I'm I'm looking at this, I I want to um I want to just go ahead and uh, look at the glare because we haven't said this. What we're really doing is we're trying to get enough daylight, but have the space be comfortable. Um, so in other words, 
the right amount of daylight is comfortable. It helps us reduce energy usage. It's a better indoor air quality, or I'm sorry, indoor environmental quality. Um, but if it's too much in the wrong place, then it's going to be glary and uh, uncomfortable and people won't use the space. Um, so for that purpose, we're going to run an annual glare study. I don't need to change anything because I've got, look at my inputs, the materials, areas, the same thing. Uh, I'm going to run it. And we already can tell lots of red is probably not good, right? Um, of course, our uh, porch is completely red because there's no glass out there. What's the red? Um, if we look at, let's go back to the slides while this is running. Um, this is the spatial um, disturbing glare oops, uh, variable. And we're basically saying that so disturbing or intolerable glare um, of greater than 38% for at least 5% of the occupied hours is is red. Uh, and so if we look at our assignment, um, we're not really we don't really have a metric for annual glare. We're just saying let's use it as a way of designing the space. And um, in terms of if we were uh, trying to meet various standards, uh, we're going to be able to say. Uh, you know, we've reduced the glare in most spaces. In this space, it doesn't matter because it's a sunroom or whatever. So there's an argument you can make for why it's glary in some place and, and not in others. Um, so we're going to we'll, we'll do that as part of this little exercise. So but the point is, we can see we've got uh, a ton of glare. Right. And the way this works is that um, these are these pies are views. And so obviously, if we're away from the sun, it's going to be uh, that's not intolerable. This is, you know, no, no. Um, glare of any kind and then uh, the red uh, facing this the outward toward the, the south or east or west in this case is um, for a lot of the year uh, intolerable in, in a lot of the spaces in the in the, the building um, so we're going to work on that but next let's go run a another daylight analysis daylight availability analysis and this time we'll do a lead 4.1 because that gives us more detail So I don't have to change any inputs. Just make sure this is what I want. I'll leave all this the same. Uh, oh, except for one thing. I'm going to turn off my, I don't, I, you know, I, I get the idea. I want this overhang here um, uh, over the porch. So I'm going to um, come to areas and turn off the porch. And then I'm going to go ahead and just run a, uh, a daylight factor again, just to see what that does. Obviously, there's no sun out here because I've, I'm not using that space. And we see that we now get a much lower um, mean daylight factor for the entire space. It, doesn't, it shouldn't affect any of these others. But if we were interested in just the um, living space, we would want to not have any of these outdoor spaces turned on. So I'm just going to stop that because it's obviously good enough. This was um, D was just, a, and by the way, the way I do this, and you need to think of a, a, a way of naming these, it makes sense for you because you're the one who has to understand. I mean, I should understand them also, but you need to know what you've changed in each of these. And as, if you get down the road and you don't keep track of these names, you're going to have no idea what you did and it's going to be useless. So you've got to be disciplined about this. So I can just call this glare, I'm going to call it glare one, uh, because the way I do it is if I change something, I change the name. So I don't have to change uh, the overhangs uh, or the, uh, because that's the same, you know, for this, this uh, next, uh, for that, that glare study. And so here I'm just going to call this um, daylight factor. So that would tell me it's the same settings as from here, which is going to be the same settings as was here. Um, well, except for that I turned off the, the porch. Um, so I might even say, uh, actually, that's a good point. That's what I did do here, right? I turned off the, so that's why I should do these uh, faster too. So no porch. I, mean, I should do them more disciplined. Uh, I should never run a second uh, simulation without naming the one before it. That's the best way of doing it. All right. So what have we learned so far? We've got, um, 
you know, we, we've got a, a decent idea of what the daylight factor would be for um, our our baseline setup of geometry. We know we've got a big glare problem, uh, and now we're going to run a um, lead 4.1 simulation and see what that tells us. So let's look at this as as this is running. Um, First of all, how many credits? We're already getting three credits. Yay, that's the most we can get. That's because um, our um, sunlight... Let, let's look at the sl slides again. Just so we... Our uh, spatial daylight autonomy is um, at least 300 lux for 50% of the occupied hours, so 8 to 6. So this is like a business... Um, uh, schedule so it really wouldn't work for a house um, most of these certifications are going to are that we're that we're dealing with are not about houses and that's we're, we're designing a house just because it's uh, an easy way to get started anyway um, so our spatial daylight autonomy um, is about uh, getting enough light and then we have this um, annual sunlight exposure which is about do we have too much light and that's if we have a, a thousand lux or more for at least 250 hours uh, in an occupied space so let's look at what, what our results are so we've got uh, the reason we have three credits here is because and I think I summarized this here um, yeah we have at least over 75 percent of um, the spaces have a spatial daylight autonomy um, so that's great but we do have a, uh, a pretty high um, ASE, and we, in, in order to get the, actually get these credits, we need to be less than 10% in all the occupied spaces, or we need to make an argument as to why we can be over 10%. Um, so, like I was saying, we already know this is a real glary area, and we probably want to do something about it. Um, if we look at the lux, it makes it even clearer that um, this is a lot of sun here. So what are we going to do? Well, I guess uh, sort of the, the old school way of doing this, or the I'm mean, not old school, but uh, the, an obvious thing to do. Let's try to get, let's try to add some uh, more overhang over this uh, south window, um, right? And if you wanted, to, if you just like, yeah, I don't really remember this. You could, we could go back and uh, go back to the site analysis tab, and we could turn our sun on. And we could uh, turn the. We could come back and turn the the roof on in the architectural modeling. We could we could uh, we could look at the sun from a, a a visual perspective and get some ideas if we wanted to. Like I could set this um, overhang at a, a um, at a different size and check when I thought that the sun was a problem and see if, how big that overhang needed to be. I could do it that way. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to come back to my, I'm going to turn off this. Actually, I'm going to turn off the sun. Which you can leave on, uh, you know, in, in certain situations. And I'm going to come back to, uh, I, I'm, I was going to make this um, six foot instead of two feet. Use the trusty uh, 1D scaling. And I'm going to run it again. Got to switch it back to availability lead. Great. So, oh, and I didn't already, I didn't. So this was the first uh, EF was... Uh, lead 4.1 I didn't change anything so from the daylight factor so I'm not going to change anything from that and this one is um, lead 4.1 and uh, south six foot and did it change anything um, yeah but not a huge amount let's see um, we are now, yeah, we, we, we knocked off 5% uh, total. And, um, you know, this is still obviously going to be super glary down here, right? And we can delve into the percentages down here, too, where um, we see that 
you know, as to be expected. It's 27% in the living room, actually 33% in the bedroom. I hadn't even been thinking about that, but there's a lot of glare over here too. Um, so we can dial in deeper um, to these to each room and uh, study it specifically. Um, and you know, I can click through and it will just it will isolate that uh, portion of the of the uh, simulation and give me outputs that I can study. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on analysis in the videos because that's what we should be doing in class. The idea of the videos is to get you to be uh, coming to class prepared with a pretty good simulation so that we can study it. Okay, so let's, um, by the way, here's another little thing to realize. If I want to turn off all my simulations, I can just hit this, uh, deselect all, and that'll get me back to sort of square one. Um, so if I'm looking back at the last one we did, okay, what can I, how can I deal with this? Um, I could, you know, I, I could, I don't think making this overhang 80 feet long is really probably going to even do it. Um, I could change the glass. That's something we'll do in a different uh, workflow. This, the idea here is for us just to focus on geometry. What if I, um, this is a house. What if I turn this into a little sunroom? And go ahead and say, yeah, you know what? I, I want this to be sunny out here. So that's going to be my, my argument in, uh, in my lead certification uh, documentation. So I could do that by adding a, uh, a wall in, uh, in my living room. And let me make sure that that, I can, you know, have to make sure that I have a material on it. I think I do because I've run this before. Uh, right here's the sunroom, just the base of the wall. I gave it a, a just a generic wall uh, material, and I'm going to run this. And we can see, uh, interesting, right? I mean, pretty much that uh, the difference between this and this is that um, we definitely are affecting the, the daylighting in this area. I think I want to switch to um, just for fun too. Let, let's go switch to um, IP units. Oh, we are in IP units. Ah, interesting. So uh, that's, that's an example where they're just using Lux in the uh, even if it's SI. Let's see if I change to XI, SI. Um, so it's the same units. Um, okay, fine. Now, um, what happened here? We see that I, um, by adding this wall, I um, really cut down on the daylighting uh, in this space and made it more even um, and clearly de demarcated this into a sunroom. So I'm going to call this I'm, uh, lead 4.1. I probably don't need to do that since I already had it. I'm going to say sun, I mean, since I had that in the previous run. I'll say sun bottom because I'm, I'm going to possibly add a top to that sunroom uh, in terms of the wall. So now um, let's just uh, see where we are in terms of glare. Come back, run an annual glare. And just in terms of this this particular goal here, we have, if I compare it to the original, um, we seem to be, um, th there's still a lot of glare in here without the wall. And with the wall, there's some, but it's definitely reducing quite a bit. Uh, maybe if we make this wall taller, we'll solve that problem even more. Um, so we're starting to really demarcate a, um, one, one problem here I realize is that I, the, the work plane is right at the height of the wall. Um, so maybe that should have been a little bit higher, but it's definitely doing something. And so that's kind of what the main thing we're trying to accomplish here is, is make changes and uh, understand why they're doing what they're doing. I'm going to name this I, um, glare, glare two. Okay. I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to switch to another model and just run through a bunch of simulations I've already run just to uh, show you 
a thought process for making a design like this. Uh, I mean, a, a daylighting design. I want to run a couple more, uh, or I want to do one more uh, workflow here, uh, a point in time analysis. So what we've done so far have been averaged over the year. And now I want to, what if I wanted to have a specific, like let's say there was, uh, you know, it's, it's on Christmas Day, I want it to be really nice in the sunroom or something, and I, and I, I want to put, you know, an obstacle in the way of the sun just that will, or, you know, I could do something like the Oculus at, at the World Trade Center. I could make it to where on a certain, you know, on, on solstice at noon, I get a, a light hitting exactly where I wanted to and lighting something up, whatever. Um, there are times when you'd want to look at specific uh, points in time. What I'm going to, so I, I, we're, we've got a point in time of luminance, which means that we're going to, we're going to select a moment in time uh, to analyze. In this case, we have to choose a sky. Uh, type. So since we don't really, we're not, haven't talked about it in detail yet, let's just leave it at the, at the Perez, which is a, uh, I think that was a scientist named Perez who came up with a certain type of model. We can mess around with these and change them um, at a different date. But, you know, for example, we have clear, uh, intermediate overcast and CIE. Um, I don't know why there's a Utah, Utah colored sky uh, uniform. So Let's, let's just leave it at that. We'll leave it at, at the Perez. Uh, we've got our materials already set and our areas are the same. So it's a pretty easy simulation to run, except for we need to pick a day. So if we, um, there is a, an older version of lead where you had to pick um, the, the equinox, the fall equinox and do a 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, point in time analysis. And you had to be between 25 and 50 foot candles. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm gonna, I'm going to be uh, September 21, or I'm already there. I'm going to start at nine in the morning. I mean, obviously, let's just switch this just to a different time so we can change it. Um, change it to September 21st at 9 a.m. And uh, the ground albedo will leave. Albedo just has to do with um, how much light is absorbed and reflected. Uh, we can talk about that if anybody's interested. But, um, and you could experiment with turning it on and off. It's not gonna have a huge effect, I don't think. Okay, uh, especially because we don't have a ground to find out here. We could have done that, that would make a difference. If we had a, a surface, which was our um, site, and I made that into a surface and I gave it a material that would give us a more accurate um, analysis here, and I probably should be doing that, but just trying to keep this simple. So try it, see if it makes a difference. Okay, um, so let's run this. And what we say between, and this is in foot candles, um, and we're saying the average for all room for each room. And I think it had to be, but the high had to, could be 500, and the low would had to be above 25. So we're not um, above 25 everywhere here, probably because of this wall. Might have to adjust that um, if we were trying to meet this standard. Um, and then I could, I'm going to go ahead and stop it because nothing's changing. Um, oops, stop. I'm going to name it um, point in time, SEP 21, 9. And then let's go ahead and do it again. And change this to 3 o'clock. Run it. Interesting, we get a lot more sun, right? It seems like a nine is three hours before noon and three is three hours after noon, but um, you could look at the sun path and, and see why that's true, um, that this is more sun. Um, we are here, we're well, uh, so at three o'clock, we're um, above 25 for, uh, foot candles everywhere. Uh, and we're not above 500, I don't think, anywhere. But there are these weird little, I, I call them, I think these are, well, this might be real right here in the corner. I think they're glitches, though. Like that right there, I don't think is real because this is lower. Uh, but it might be. Um, uh, anyway, so that's point in time analysis. Uh, let's see what the assignment says about that. I actually don't think I've 
made you do a point in time analysis in the actual assignment, uh, you should do them because, um, first of all, just to learn how to do it, but also it can be really interesting, useful. Um, the final thing I want to do before moving on is a radiance render. So let's say we're, and I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Okay, so if I want to get more, let's say I, I, I want to try to deal with, um, let me go back to my glare. This, this glare should still be the same because we did it after we did the wall. Um, let's say I want to just understand more about what's going on with the sun at any of these points. I can, I can so, um, if, and by the way, another really important thing is you can adjust these window sizes. Um, you kind of have to dig around, like here's the one down here. Uh, and then if you adjust these, then you can scroll through your simulations here. Um, so again, you just got to get adept at this. So um, if I select any of these points in time, like this one, and um, now I have the yearly down here in months, I have the full year of the um, sun, the glare analysis for this little pie slice. So if I select a certain moment in time, like let's say I'm going to be February, I'm going to pick one that seems like it's glary. Um, and uh, click this camera over here, this window appears, and I start doing a um, radiance render. Um, so right now it's doing an RGB. I could do a grayscale. I can, there's all sorts of, of uh, well, there's several options. I'm going to choose false color. Yours is probably going to be like a, a different setting, um, like maybe that. Um, I'm picking something that would will give me a clear view of the sun, and we can I could even go higher. But sort of as expected, there it is. It's it's outside <laughs> uh, and coming through the window. This is a fisheye, so you can move it around. Um, so I could say, well, maybe I'll make a, a this overhang larger, or I'll put some kind of vertical obstruction here. Um, and I and if I do that, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Um, actually, this is getting long, so I'm not going to do it right now. But I, if I were to add um, a uh, an obstruction here and go back to that that fisheye that that radiance rendering, it would show up without even running the render again. So I could I could do a quick iteration back and forth to decide how to change my geometry. Um, and you can actually save those those images also. Okay, so what I want to do now is just look at a different, um, the same model, but just where I've already done these simulations, and um, kind of just go through a, a full design process. I'm going to turn off. Um, I'm try. I'll try to change the geometry as it's changed in the model. Um, so we started off with the same, uh, you know, these uh, the basic daylight factor. We added um, a um, a porch and entry overhang. We we went to the six. The six. Let me turn these off because I don't want it to seem like these are always on. And this, uh, we added a six foot uh, west and two foot south overhang. Then we did a glare analysis. Where we realized, yeah, we're gonna have a problem there. Um, turned off the porch. And then we did our first uh, lead analysis where we realized, okay, yeah, we've we're getting three points, but we've got a, a glare problem. Um, then we tried a six foot um, southern overhang, and that helped a little bit, but we still had um, you know a really glary area. So we decided, well, what if we just say now I'm going to make a, that into a sunroom? We added the bottom, the base wall. So that's what um, was the output. Um, in the lead analysis, when we did that, the glare analysis, this is where we were before. Um, we came to this point in, in the model we did together. Um, and let me just skip through these two. Oh, wait, I'm on this, the wrong model. I'm sorry. This is the model I wanted. But the idea is the same. Uh, so here's the sunroom in a daylight factor analysis showing the, the clear cutoff with the base 
um, wall added. Uh, then um, I added some kitchen um, cabinets. Let's see here to try to reduce some of the glare here. Um, and I see, saw that I, uh, you know, had reduced the glare somewhat. Um, and then I did a render like we were showing to see that, okay, this is my wall here, I can the, the, the base wall. And I could see, well, if I added a taller wall here, I could uh, knock out that bright sun uh, and maybe uh, drop this intolerable glare somewhat. Um, so then I added a wall here uh, to complete my sunroom. And so we go from this without the wall, without the top, to this with it. So that had a huge effect on glare for obvious reasons, because if we go back and look at, if I looked at that uh, render, that radiance render again with this wall here, uh, it's pretty clear that that sun would have been knocked out for this portion of the of the uh, the room. Um, and so here we are in a daylight factor with that same layout. Um, and the, uh, the daylight factor, and this is the, the lead analysis. Then I started trying to work on this glare over here, and um, I added a 12-foot overhang on the west, um, which I think I might even have modeled here. No, I don't. I don't think I think I cut it back. Yeah, there it is. Um, you know, remember, I can easily change the size of this physically, uh, but I'm just going to go through these quickly because this is, video is getting kind of long. Um, so I... Uh, this is with adding a 12-foot overhang. That helps somewhat, but I mean, kind of thinking, wow, it seems like it should do more. If you think about it, we know why that's true. It's because the, a lot of the sun on the west is low in the sky, so it's going to be coming you know, in underneath this roof. Um, but also, the, why would we add a roof out here? Well, that's a porch. That's going to be useful outdoor space, so we're getting some daylighting protection and we're adding space. It's a win-win. Um, then I added a another wall. I added this... Um, exterior wall. Actually, I think in that, that case, I had moved it down and was right here because I, I didn't really keep track of this that clearly. Um, so imagine it there uh, between these two. It didn't do that much. Uh, then I started adding um, uh, this top portion to the, um, and I already had this two foot in there, by the way. I started adding another overhang out here, a two, two foot first, and then a three foot. And um, those together did a fair amount, and then I then I added this wall that you're seeing here. Um, actually, by just moving the other uh, the wall, this this wall I had placed over here at one point. Um, and so now this this would be a you know it, it might be a, a real architectural reason for having it could just be plants you know it could be a, an arbor. Um, and now so what have I got? I've got a clearly a sunroom that I can make an argument, well, not an argument, I can say this is a sunroom, I want it to be uh, bright here, uh, and then if I don't want to be in the bright sun, I can come to, you know, maybe there's a desk here where the computer is. Um, it's not bad to have a bright, sunny kitchen, uh, if you can have a place you can go to cook and be out of the sun when it is sunny. Um, the bedroom, uh, this is the west side, I might want to put my bedroom on the east side, and then I would, wouldn't mind having some sun coming in bright in the morning, but this is also... Uh, a limited amount near the edge. So if I had a bed right here, for example, which I probably should draw in here to see, um, then I wouldn't be getting glare on the bed. It would be like a, maybe I'd put a chair here and have a bed here. And so um, I don't have any glare at a time that would, or at a way, in a way that would affect me. And um, in the, if I'm trying to read in bed, but also in the bedroom, you're there mostly at night. So the glare is less important. So that's a part of the narrative I could make. Um, so this is a pretty good daylighting design that we've developed um, in a nuanced way by adding these sunroom walls, by adding some cabinets, um, by and adjusting our outdoor overhangs. Um, and then our final lead setup is um, we have all three points because we're getting a huge amount of daylighting, which is awesome. We ha still have 27%, um, but almost all of that that overage is all in the living room which has got the sunroom in it so i could actually go back and this would probably would have been a good thing to do and separate this this floor into a you know living area and a sunroom and then i could have taken the living room out of my calculation and definitely gotten it down to below 10 percent um, so i would you know if i were doing this for a job i would go back and do that now um, and the rest of these the bed is is 
higher than 10 percent but not much and we can totally make the argument that that's not a problem so i think i consider this a pretty good daylight design and for a small space it's really hard to do to do that we, we wouldn't do a commercial lead um, design qual uh, certification for this space so um, but it's good to use it as a design tool okay the last thing i want to do is that in the assignment um, so we basically have run through uh, the detached house portion the apartment portion remember so the idea is that we have two configurations of the same uh, living space uh, and the idea here is let's see what we can do um, just with wind, with changing glazing so in other words not doing all the shading and, and interior geometry stuff um, and one reason would be that an, that an apartment might have less uh, options in terms of shading uh, but also it's just let, let's start thinking about glazing too I'm, I did not create um, a an apartment set of, of um, layers uh, so you, you should do that on your own um, for your own model um, but I just want to show you quickly how to change the uh, how to change glazing let me go and I'm gonna turn off these simulations um, okay so let's just say I'm I'm not going to use just to get a quick approximation of the um, apartment I'm not going to have any of the okay I, I guess I could leave the the, the um, cabinets doesn't really matter um, and I'm again I'm not trying to make a simulation here I just want to show you how to change glazing so if I um, come back to my materials and uh, I mean, you know how to change glazing, but I'm saying to how to, um, and actually we don't need this. I'm gonna clear that because there's nothing on this this layer um, that the, I mean, in the, the main layer does not have anything on it. Um, okay, so if I select this, uh, one, of the, one of these um, glazing layers, Go to glazing assembly. Um, what might I do? Uh, let's just think about it for a second. So if I'm trying to get rid of that glare area, um, which like for example, you know, we have all this glare here. What if I want to try to deal with that with glazing? I might um, pick something that has a low uh, visible transmittance and I'm going to talk or have talked about this in lecture so I'm not going to go to details about the properties of windows but I will just mention them quickly um, so if I go to I'm actually going to then I'm just going to select the visible transmittance tab because that's going to organize all my uh, possible glazing packages by that uh, variable and it's uh, I can see you know I, I can get really low visible transmittance but let's say I want to do, um, let me just look for something reasonable. And there, you know, one problem can be with, with a, a low visible transmittance glass can be colored. It can be uh, something that you really can't see through that well. So there's other issues here. But here, let's just pick this um, double pane glass with a visible transmittance of 22.6%. Um, the, the vis front and vis back uh, had to do with the front and back of the glass and how much is reflecting outward and how much inward. Um, U value, we've, uh, this is in uh, IP units, so this is going to be about an R value of four because um, it's the reciprocal is R value. And then we have a pretty low solar heat gain coefficient too, which we might not like here. We might want to get some solar gain. Um, but anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick it just as an example and select. Uh, that's, I'm just going to change the south for now. And let me run uh, a simulation. Actually, I don't know what. Since this is a different model, actually, I'll go back to the other model. Bear with me a second here. So this is the model we were running before. Uh, I'm going to turn off my sunroom walls. And I'm going to change this glazing. So this was the, the last run we did. Um, was this and um, and this was the the lead version so I'm going to go change my glazing here 
on the south to that, um, I don't know which one it was, doesn't really matter. I think we were around um, 23, I think I said something like that we were, so we were um, selected. Let's just, just do the south for now. And is, let's see, is there a difference between, oh wait, this is point in time. I don't want that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it. I wanna do a daylight availability lead, run it. And so we're back, we're comparing to this. So this is with uh, the, the clear single pane glass and this is with our new glass clearly having an effect, right? Sorry, here to here. So the point is that we can do a lot with glass um, and uh, a lot of the same things with glass and even more than we can with geometry. So your assignment for the the apartment portion of the, of the assignment is to try to sort of emulate what we did, what you did in uh, with the geometry in the detached house, do it in the apartment, which is going to have fewer windows, you know, on some of the faces, but do it just with glazing uh, and see if you can get something close to what you got with geometry or something better. All right, that's it. So um, we'll also run through this in class and uh, please come to class with um, some form of simulation and some questions so that we can actually get into the interesting thing about what's really going on with with the uh, with what we're with the outputs we're getting as opposed to just the workflow all right